Hello everyone, welcome again to Massa United Insurance's Line and Length. It's a cricket programme where we look at the sport, not only in the region, but internationally as well. I'm Barry Wilkinson, hello to all of our friends on Digital Sports Max. Andrew Seeley is back with me. It's been six weeks we've been on the road at the Hero Caribbean Premier League, which everyone should know by now was won by the Trinidad and Tobago Red Steel. Andrew, any surprise there to you? The Bravo, Bravo show and the Trinidad and Tobago Red Steel, they did it to the Barbados Tridents. Indeed they did. We're going to take a look back at what transpired in that final and talk to some key components especially Darren Bravo, brother of uh, Dwayne, who scored 95% uh, of his runs in Trinidad and Tobago. We're going to talk to him about how he feels about the tournament. We're also going to talk to Brian Lara. He had a special training session um, at that Hero Caribbean Premier League final. And then, of course, Andrew, last week, I missed it, but it was a tremendous climax to the Master United and Insurance Barbados Derby. Definitely on a horse called Poetic License, a filly. She was outstanding, and some people were moved to tears. Well, you know, uh, women rule these days. <laughs> so it's no, um, it's no wonder that Poetic License was able to win. We're going to take a look back at that in our special Mass United Insurances spin. All to talk about right now on Mass United Insurances Line and Length. Across the Caribbean, more people are placing their trust in Massey United Insurance for the protection of the things that are important to them, their homes, businesses, and their prized possessions. That's because Massey United Insurance offers excellent general insurance coverage to help you manage whatever life sends your way. Our cadre of well-reputed agencies and trained insurance professionals are always ready to provide you with sound advice and prompt service. Choose the security and sound strength that is Massey United Insurance. So we're back on the program. What a final it was. The atmosphere, Andrew, was tremendous on the ground at the Queen's Park Oval last week, Sunday, as uh, Trinidad and Tobago won their first ever Hero Caribbean Premier League. The first title was won by the Jamaica Talawas, and then last year the Tridents won, and this year it was the uh, TNT Reds team. Look at those celebrations. Everyone having a grand time prior to the presentation, and even the Prime Minister, the Honorable Kamala Passad Bessessar, was there uh, to, to so, receive. So, so talk about it, right? Talk, talk about it. How exciting was it? Uh, it was great to be on the ground, but uh, the final, I thought, lacked that intensity in the last three overs. Well, the, a, yeah. a disappointing performance by the Tridents uh, and a chase of a score like that. Yeah. One needed to be really on point. And I don't think the Tridents were. And, and Captain Kieran Pollard admitted they fell at the last hurdle. They did. I mean, you look back at some of these highlights now and you, you, you can tell that, you know, they should have really um, fought a bit harder when it came to the pivotal points of the match, Andrew. Cal Corbin, like everyone said, coming at three was a bit surprised. Then Misma and uh, Kyle. Back at four. Yeah, to and, and together. they, they, they I mean, ended yeah, up yes. a lot of balls. Uh, um, I mean, what, balls. what was good was the performance of Steve Taylor. Not much yeah. mention has been made of him. Uh, he's not well known. In fact, uh, as we watched the game, some people said, who's this guy? 21-year-old <laughs> Jamaican, lives in the United States, is a resident, so he can play for the USA. But because, of course, he's still Jamaican, he can also play um, for one of the, the, the Caribbean states. Mm. But I don't, know if he, I don't think he's going to lose his nationality by uh, leaving to play for Jamaica or even Barbados. Well, certainly an interesting choice by the Tridents. Uh, Very and someone, interesting. And someone who I can imagine seeing down the road in, in, in T20. Well, T20. I understand he was recommended by Chris Gale. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, he, he obviously was in the auction and he was bought by the Tridents. But as we look at the, the, fi the final pieces of this game, it was clear that the, the Tridents kind of lost some wind in the sail at the end. And that's why, you know, you know we had the situation there with the Reds still winning. Well, after the game... I caught up with Darren Bravo. He scored 261 runs in eight matches played in Trinidad and Tobago. And hear this, he scored 30 uh, playing in six matches outside. <laughs> but he had a, fa a fantastic finish to the tournament. I spoke with him right after the game. I knew in the back of my mind, I was one good shot away from being my best. And I don't really want to boast, I don't want to really song that sort of way. But um, you know, I just backed myself after his and Gabriel the six over long off. And you know, that sort of gave me the confidence and obviously to you know, put some runs on the board for my team. In terms of the tournament this year, the, the whole level has improved, the whole competition has improved. How do you see it? Because this is your third year playing. 
Yeah, it was a fantastic tournament and well run tournament. Obviously, you know, when we look at you know the amount of games we played early in the tournament, it was sort of like you know, we really had any momentum, but we knew, you know, coming down to the back end, you know, as long as we start winning games, you know, we're gonna be in the driver's seat. And that was exactly what happened. I want to say congratulations to my brother once more. He led the team fantastically well and um, it's a great feeling. The coach did a fantastic job, the manager, the entire management team, you know, the guys have been putting in a lot of work. It's a great feeling, I'm really excited and really happy. Your brother keeps alluding to the fact that there's a, a, a 12th man in the side. He says that the 12th man has been the Trinidad and Tobago crowd. How do you view this crowd that have come night after night, 16,000 people every match for eight consecutive games? Yeah, it's, obviously it's great um, to know that you know your fans are giving you that support that is needed. Um, whenever I walk out the bat, you can see you know, a lot of noise. And that sort of gives me the sort of motivation to go out and perform in front of my family and my, you know, the, the, the people of Chantebago. It's a great feeling. Just want to thank them, you know, obviously, for coming out and supporting us. Without them, I'm sure this it wouldn't have been possible. They were behind us, even though we, wouldn't, we didn't start off well. But as you can see, they, they enjoyed the victory with us and they're all celebrating. Doesn't look like the tour to Zimbabwe might come off uh, as planned. What will Dwayne Bravo be doing now and his uh, between now and his next tournament? Not Dwayne Bravo, Darren Bravo. Darren Bravo, forgive me. <laughs> um, I have some work to do. I have, and obviously, I need to start back on you know, my physical aspect, physical aspect of my game. And, uh, I was going on uh, like a three-week um, gym program you know, to get back myself where I want to be. Um, keeping my fingers crossed that the, 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 the Zimbabwe tour comes on. It's a very important one for West Indies as well. So I'm um, keeping my fingers crossed they're selected. You know, it's, I just want to go out there and perform, you know, continue where I left off in the CPL. And I saw finally Brian Lara, your cousin, had a tremendous coaching clinic here today. I know you call upon him sometimes when your form is, is waning. Um, have you spoken to him recently and has he been helping your cricket? Yeah, well, I'm um, obviously keeping contact with WhatsApp and like, Every so often, and I mean, you've been supporting me. You know, I didn't really have the best of times early in the tournament, but you know, sometimes when I lie down in, in my room and I just want that sort of motivation, I will go on YouTube and uh, type in Brian Lara and just look at some of the best innings, and that sort of give me motivation. Obviously, I look up to him, look up to my brother, and yeah, it's a great feeling. And you know, you all have been supporting me yesterday. You know, you came into the dressing room and you give me a little pep talk and stuff like that. So, Brian and I are very close, and I'm really happy, and that is something I keep very close to my heart. All right, well, Darren, all the best. I got the name right this time. All the best. Uh, continue to, to keep it up uh, your good form. Thanks very much, man. Take care. Across the Caribbean, more people are placing their trust in Massey United Insurance for the protection of the things that are important to them, their homes, businesses, and their prized possessions. That's because Massey United Insurance offers excellent general insurance coverage to help you manage whatever life sends your way. Our cadre of well-reputed agencies and trained insurance professionals are always ready to provide you with sound advice and prompt service. Choose the security and sound strength that is Massey United Insurance. We're back on Massey United Insurance's line of length. We continue to look back at what was, I thought, a successful uh, Hero Caribbean Premier League. We had some uh, eight teams, six teams in the tournament. Let's start from the bottom and work our way to the top. First of all, Andrew, St. Kitts and Nevis Patriots finishing at number six. This tournament was so close, it was difficult to perhaps look at any one team and say they had the strength and, could, and, uh, and, and, and perhaps could not win the tournament. Any team that played there could have won. The Patriots happened to finish at the bottom. And I think one of the best things about the Patriots this year was the performance of Marlon Samuels as a captain and as a premier batsman. For the first two seasons of the CPL, Marlon Samuels did not turn up. And certainly he turned up in 2015. And that was the good thing about the Patriots. And also they introduced some new players and some new players internationally who did quite well. Yeah, I thought Samuels turned up as a player in the first two years because he did score 100 mm. here at Kensington and had a couple of good scores but as a captain he was poor mm. so yeah he did show up to me he led by example as a captain with the decisions that he made mm. on the field I thought I was impressed with Marlins captaincy mm. for the Patriots this year and I think that's why they did well he he was the person who picked Shami which is the leg spitter oh, that, de uh, that, definitely yeah. outstanding pick from South Africa again some people would say perhaps like Stephen Taylor a yeah. no-name product but certainly at the end of the tournament cannot be deemed a no-name product no indeed he was impressive and it was uh, it was good to see that at least even though the Patriots uh, went out it was not that they were blown away right. uh, run rates came into the, the context and uh, it was just a simple case where they happened to be at the bottom because uh, of their the net run rate and also yes they finished one point short of the, the team above them the Zooks which brings us to them the Solution Zooks I thought they should have finished much higher but like I said 
a lot of things came into play for the Zooks. It was unfortunate that their very first match got rained out. So therefore, uh, they were a point short to start with because they only got one point from that. And then um, some decisions that went, I would say, against them in the middle of the tournament. But the biggest thing and the disappointment for the Zooks was losing their inspirational captain in Jamaica, Darren Sammy. He was a big blow losing him being lost in the tournament. Whenever and wherever Sammy plays and whatever team he plays for, he is an inspiration. And once the Zooks lost the Darren Sammy factor, if you want to call it that, yeah. they lost the Darren Sammy factor and from then on, it was difficult. Ke yes, Kevin Peterson, outstanding player, perhaps even can, one can say a good captain, but certainly the inspiration for Andre Fletcher and company was not there. Yes, uh, even though Peterson uh, took up the mantle to, to captain the team, the effect, like you said correctly, Andrew, still did not have the, the same. It was like if they lost their figurehead um, and that, that happened to, you know, eliminate them from the tournament. So they finished uh, fifth. And let's move to number four now, the Jamaica Talawas. Again, <laughs> anybody could have won this tournament. The Talawas happened to play one of their worst matches in that first semi-final, which the Trinidad and Tobago Red Steel team were very pumped up. And Gale threatened to take that game away with a very encouraging start to his innings. But it's not how you start, it's how you finish. And the Red Steel were, were better on that day. I think, I think the problem with the Talawas is that everything was left to Gale to do. And that's the problem. Chris Gale, the Chris Gale factor, if we want to talk about factors again, Chris Gale needed to deliver in almost every game. And it, once he did not deliver, the yeah. Tala was running into trouble. It seems as if, or almost as if the other batsmen were waiting on Gale to deliver. And once he didn't, the Bonners, the Blackwoods, etc., just did not come to the party. But the biggest, biggest tournament disappointment would have been Mahela Jair Wardener. Oh, he was a tremendous letdown. There, there, there's some discussions about some of the so-called big names that have come to the CPL. But certainly, I, I mean, that Jar Wardner was disappointing, yes. Yeah. But we can also talk a bit about somebody called Shahid Afridi. Boom, boom. Uh, they, did you know he was playing in the CPL? Yeah, but <laughs> I, I wouldn't be too concerned about Afridi based on one fact that... Um, he is an impact player, so he, he's going to come off occasionally. Mm -hmm. But Mihaila Jai Warren is, yeah, yeah, is very, consistent. Usually, yeah, very consistent. Usually very consistent, um, but very disappointing. Chris Lynn was also a big disappointment for the Jamaica Talawas. Impressed with the bowling of Jerome Taylor. Uh, Andrew Russell was inconsistent. That was also a disappointment. Santoki Bowell was almost finished with the most wickets. No complaints there about uh, Kishmar Santoki. But the, like you said correctly, to summarise Jamaica, Gail was the, the key. And uh, he did not open uh, a lot of doors when he failed for the uh, Jamaica Talawas. Now, at number three, the Ghana Amazon Warriors, a team who you have to give a lot of credit for, for how well they played at home. And also, they started so poorly, the way that they uh, became consistent was a very admirable um, aspect of how they played in this tournament. Yeah, uh, it's a strange combination, the, the Ghana team, playing three spinners uh, for most games, uh, Bishu, uh, Permol, and of course, Sunil Lorraine, the, yeah. the, the, the Trump factor. But, in, but I think one of the issues for, for the Amazon Warriors was that Narain did not deliver till the latter half of the tournament. Yeah. And the Amazon Warriors needed some points up front. They were always playing catch up, and, that, and I think that was their difficulty. Yeah. And also, the batting of Brad Hodge uh, was a very, very interesting aspect to how the uh, Guyanese batted. Didn't see why Shanapo had to play. Not a big T20 player. He's not even a big test cricketer. Unfortunately, his cricket has but fallen. He, but, he, but he played the, f the first couple of games yeah. and then, and then uh, he apparently disappeared. He did, <laughs> he did. Uh, Lendo Simmons... He was interesting to see in the tournament as well because uh, Lendl Simmons um, did not uh, show the consistency. He also picked up a bit of an injury and uh, that, that was uh, unfortunate for him. Let's speed to the wars, the last two. We spoke a lot about the Red Steel and Tridents. We won't harp too much on them. But first of all, the Tridents. Where did the Tridents go wrong in this tournament? Uh, no Shoei Malik at the tail end. Yes. Short answer. No Shoei Malik at the tail end. Yeah, no Shoei Malik. Uh, Dwayne Smith was inconsistent, got 49 in the final, only one half century. Uh, a, a bit of inconsistency there, which was unfortunate because I thought that he, once he always gets going, the trends always do well. Um, so that was, that was the only thing I would have to say there. Pollard's captaincy was very good. Made some decisions in the final that were questionable. But generally, you would have to be impressed with Kyron Pollard's captaincy and his inspirational leadership in the tournament. And then the Red Steel. 
the Bravo Brothers seal the deal, backed up by Jack Callis. Well, uh, big names. Those are three big names, two Bravos and Callis. Yes. What else can we say? Callis delivered the veteran that he is. He delivered every time with both bat and ball. Bravo delivered with both bat and ball, and Darren Bravo delivered with bat. Indeed. So great stuff. Well done to the Red Steel. And uh, we look forward to seeing what they have to offer uh, come 2016 uh, for the Hero Caribbean Premier League event number four. Now, prior to the start of the Hero Caribbean Premier League, we were treated to an exhibition of a batsmanship from Brian Lara, who handpicked some youngsters who were there, um, who were, when I say there, not that they were there and who were handpicked there, but they were there bowling at him, and it was called Brian Lara Masterclass. Um, he was donned in his whites, uh, helmeted, and he had all his gear, and he was showing youngsters who were watching parents as well, and spectators, about the, the art of batsmanship. He also shared some secrets with Ian Bishop, who was uh, there quizzing him as he was mic'd up for the entire ground. It was a, a very refreshing sight to see Brian Lara back in the middle. And also, I think everyone who was there and watched what he had to offer would have learned a lot about why he has been such a great batsman over the years. I happened to catch up with Brian Lara right after his practice session. <laughs> All right, I'm talking with uh, Brian Lara. Brian, first of all, how great was it to be out in the middle again coaching youngsters? I was in a bad experience. Uh, I think um, Ian Bishop did a wonderful job uh, co-hosting it. And uh, I think it's all for the kids. You know, we've, we've got a, a full dose of uh, T20 cricket. It's very exciting. I love the fact that the game has evolved and there's different formats of the game now that people can enjoy. But I just felt and, and I wanted to stress the importance of having the foundation, the things that I grew up with in the 70s and 80s, understanding how to bat technique and developing that and then being able to go on the attack and you know my favorite players in the world are the ones who can play all forms of the game you know not tied down to test matches or just a totally t20 player the guy who can form that 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 game that can take him through transcends all boundaries is a guy that i really love to see play cricket wise brand you've done everything do you want to do some more of this coaching youngsters and helping them perhaps sometime in the future well i'm always available uh, you know it's not um it's not my day-to-day -day job, but it's always uh, uh, any opportunity that I have to give back. It's wonderful. I think today is a great atmosphere. I felt it was a wonderful uh, choice of words trying to do the master class here in front. Not just youngsters, but in terms of parents as well. And um, hopefully they've gotten something out of it. And as you said, if the uh, opportunity arise again, no problem. In terms, Brian, of the T20 game, the Test cricket game, the 50-over game, you think youngsters need to perhaps stay a bit more closer to Test cricket to learn the real rudiments of batting like you did? Well, I, I think they have to understand the history of the West, of West Indies cricket. West Indies is not going to be considered a force to be reckoned with or a competitive, competitive team in the world if test record isn't better. Um, we can win any T20 tournament, but if you can't get out there and beat Australia and England and India in test matches, we, all, we, we know we're just going to be down at the bottom. And I would love to see us raise in that aspect of the game. So it's no problem, as I said. The perfect batsman for me is a guy who can play all forms of the game, has the technique for test cricket, can go on the attack when he wants in T20s and bring all those games together whenever he wants. So, um, you know, as a purist, as someone who grew up in the 70s and 80s and understanding that invincible period of the West Indies team, I want to see it come back again. Maybe not as invincible, but at least very competitive with the best team over five days of cricket. Ryan, I wish you all the best. Thank you very much. Across the Caribbean, more people are placing their trust in Massey United Insurance for the protection of the things that are important to them, their homes, businesses, and their prized possessions. That's because Massey United Insurance offers excellent general insurance coverage to help you manage whatever life sends your way. Our cadre of well-reputed agencies and trained insurance professionals are always ready to provide you with sound advice and prompt service. Choose the security and sound strength that is Massey United Insurance. We're back at Mass United Insurance's line and length, and while the Hero Caribbean Premier League was ongoing, we saw right in Barbados the wonderful edition of the Massey United Insurance Barbados Derby for three-year-olds, one of the biggest horse races in the Caribbean. Andrew Seeley, he was at the Garrison Savannah along with Carlos Cox. They did a great job in rounding up poetic license as she won her first ever Barbados Derby. 
It's Saturday, July 25th, and it's Massey United Insurance Derby Day. And now let's take in some of the parade. Now let's go to the parade ring and see the horses. Red flag is raised. They're off and running towards the inside. Hercules goes for the lead. Coming across from the outside, I can see the blue cap of gazing against the rail. And second is none other than Hercules towards the outside. That one traveling nicely is Bulletproof, who's on the fire this afternoon. Tachyon and uh, the back mark at this stage is World Ain't Enough. So change the guard up front. And would you believe it? It is the favorite. Poetic Lexington who's gone at least 10 lengths clear smoking as they come towards the line. The quarter has been completed in 24 flat towards the straight for the first time. Poetic Lexington clear by eight. In second position on the inside, that one is Hercules against the middle of the rail. That one in the middle of the track, sorry, is Tachyon towards the outside is gazing. Then there is Bandit Stablemate. Donico did it. Ranges mid pack against the rail comes bulletproof. Then there is what's up, do this means war world ain't enough. And Benghazi can see the field. The quarter, the half mile in 48 and one fifth. And it is poor at Lyson on cruise control, clear by 10. In second position, Hercules is being pressed. Gazing also being asked for effort. Donny Cody is taking closer order in between horses. Is Tachyon towards the outside? You can find that one is gazing. Then there's bulletproof in regress or the gates. The real comes. What's up, dude? World ain't enough trying to get into it. This means war has one beaten, and that is Ben Gazi. Six for lungs in one thirteen flat. And poetic license continue to smoke in front. Call it fifteen clear. They're going to have to really run to reel her in. It is Poetic License clear by 16 and a half. They are they, racing the SOS for this one. Poetic License is clear. Clear sailing. The others are bunching up in second position on the chase. Here comes Donny Cody with a lot of work to do. Gazing is running on at one pace. So too is Ben Gazi is giving up ghosts as they come back towards the corner. Poetic License clear by eight and a half. Donny Cody is just running at her. They come towards the corner. The 2015 Massey United Shores Derby. And it is Poetic License clear by three and a half. Donny Cody is just sailing. Switch towards the outside. This two horse race. And it is Poetic License. Donny Cody is coming. Poetic License and Donny Cody is Poetic License by a length and a half. Don't equal to the destroy desperately on the outside. One last search is not going to be enough. Poetic license hangs on by a half a length to win the race. A magnificent ride by Ricky Walker. What a tremendous victory by Poetic License in the 2015 Mass United Insurance Barbados Derby. A pillar to post victory over the 2,000 meters distance. And certainly it was a tremendous victory in this, the 2015 Mass United Insurance Barbados Derby. Victorious. And the crowd has gone wild for what is easily one of the most popular victories at the Garrison Savannah and the Mass United Insurance 2015 Derby. Outstanding victory by Poetic License, trainer Victor Cheeseman. How do you feel? Yeah, I feel very good. You know, uh, I had a very hard work on her. You know, it was uh, very stressful. I had one or two injuries that I had to work with, and uh, I worked hard towards it. And here she is today, been a derby. Was the plan to go as fast as, as she did? I mean, it was an outstanding victory. Yes. No, uh, that was the decision to go get away from them and make them come and get you. Uh, nothing from bulletproof at all in this this uh, Trinidadian horse. You disappointed that the Trinidadian horse did not did not show at all in the race. Well, you know he he come very late, you know, mm. and uh, I didn't look at much from him in that particular race. And Donico did it, uh, trying to catch uh, Poetic License in the straight, but uh, your jockey held on. 
Yes, uh, she was very good at the end. I am absolutely thrilled because I bred this horse, I bred her mother, I bred her grandmother, and I owned her great-grandmother. Mm. And I've sold the majority of her because I'm still a part owner to a very decent man in Georgia Les. Mm. And I am absolutely thrilled because I think I have the best trainer in Barbados training. Mm. And honestly, I'm with her every day. And it has been a long, hard road. And I also think I have the best jockey riding because very few people would have had the courage to go 10, 12 lengths clear. Mm. But that's how she runs. Tremendous words can't describe how we feel today. Mm. Uh, such a big team effort went into this. You know, everybody, the grooms, the trainer, you know, it's all a team, you, all, you know. Just tremendous, just a tremendous feeling. And you know, to somebody new into the business. This is my second year, mm -hmm. owning horses. Last yeah, year we- Two big victories. You know, and last year we won the, the, the Derby with Voldemort. We came out this year, you know, and uh, after the midsummer, everybody said that, you know, she can't say. But, uh, she stood. <laughs> we found out after the race that she had a problem mm -hmm. that we didn't know of. We corrected it. And you see the performance today, you know. But all kudos go to trainer Victor Giesman, my partner Jeffrey Bino, co-owner Philip uh -huh. Mosey, you know, all the grooms, everybody in, in the barn. And the jockey, of course. Oh, Ricky, you know, mm -hmm. he's... He knows about the front, you know, he comes every morning and works. So it's just a complete team effort and quiet license is just a machine, you know. So that's it for our program. Congratulations again to Poetic License and the Connections for winning her first ever, of course, Mass United Insurance Barbados Derby. It's been great telling you all about this tournament, the Hero Caribbean Premier League, and we look forward next week to discussing perhaps the Ashes and much more. I'm Barry Wilkinson. Until next week, goodbye for now.